Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Man Cave. Got a good little program for you this morning. And uh, I thought I'd start off with a uh, song that I have never done for anybody. I might have played it for Sue one time. I guarantee you, I've never played it on this channel. Well, I shouldn't say that, because sure as I say that, 10 years ago, somewhere along the line, I might have played it. <laughs> but I don't think I ever have. In fact, I don't think I've ever played it for anybody. Seriously. It's uh, probably for good reason. <laughs> it's probably not that good. But also, uh, it's, it's a kind of a complicated song to get a hold of. And uh, trying to play it on this auction guitar will even be that much more difficult. I probably should just do it on the mandolin. But it has a better sound on the guitar if I can get through it. <laughs> I wrote it in A minor. Let me tell you a little bit of the story first. There's, uh, I've mentioned to you about the Civil War stuff I found here. Well, there's what we call the Kitchell Cemetery. It's about, you know, like my property is from our front fence here at JR's property to the back fence it's exactly one mile and then about another I don't know if it would be a half mile I doubt it's a half mile but roughly in that ballpark maybe three-eighths of a mile back further there's a little cemetery called the Kitchell Cemetery now the odd thing about this cemetery is that it's in the middle of these gigantic pine trees and I mean the pine trees are spaced every 15 or 20 feet I mean they're really close together and they're gigantic, you know, I mean, they're good size. I mean, they're not huge, huge, but they're, you know, 20-inch type trees. So they're great big pine trees, not little saplings or something. And uh, they, uh, they're they all grown around the grave, and there's just pine boughs everywhere. There's no grass at all, uh, and there's just these two grave markers standing up. And uh, that's what inspired this song. I call it the Kitchell Cemetery. And of course, I took a little poetic license with the wording on this. So you'll have to understand that we do know who the graves belong to, but it, it says we don't in the song. <laughs> that's, that's the poetic license part. So here's, here's a look at the gravestones that are there. And you can see some moron had to shoot a hole through that cast iron one there uh, at the top. Uh, you know, people are just stupid. That's all I can tell you. But uh, here we go. I'll try to do this. Like I said, I've never done it before. I'm going to pull the words over here closer to the uh, picture so that uh, I can read them. Because I don't even, I definitely don't know these by heart. Um, and I don't know that I'll get through this, but we'll give it our best shot. Kitchell Cemetery. Down a narrow, down a narrow logging road In a virgin stand of pines Near a small hidden cave Along an old hillside Rest two lonely graves Their markers standing tall But their names have worn off And no one knows them at all No one knows their names this much is true I can hear the old barn owl asking who But the forest is silent No answer can be heard Those two lonely souls Can speak not a word Two unknown graves Below the pine boughs Two lovers lie beneath Fulfilling their vows The graves are unkept The stones still stand To remind passers-by Of this woman and the man At the end of the road Lie the ruins of their home It seems to match the graves On the hillside all alone as I gaze at the ruins, I can almost see Those two lonely souls staring back at me No one knows their names, this much is true And I can hear the old barn owl asking who But the forest is silent, no answer can be heard those two lonely souls can speak not a word. Those two 
those two lonely souls can speak not a word. <sighs> there you go. <laughs> You're the first ones to ever hear it. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's not necessarily a good thing. But... Um, Anyway, uh, you can see that the uh, marker on the right is a Civil War marker, um, and it does have the name Kitchell there. I can't make out the first name right now. Um, I think, I think, I know, I don't know this. This could be husband and wife, but honestly, I, I kind of think I remember this being the mother in the in the cast iron tombstone and the son is what I think it is, but I don't know that for sure either. But the truth of it is, it's in the middle of the woods. I mean, it, there's nothing around. Nothing at all. No roads coming to it. Nothing. I mean, like it's, you got to want to find it to be there. You really, truly do. Uh, yeah, it's creepy when you're there. Especially on, you know, on, on a particular tank type of day where the light's just right. And it's, you know, these giant pine trees all around it. It'll give you chills. It really will. Uh, it's one of the creepiest uh, places uh, in terms of cemeteries I've ever seen, really. <laughs> because it's it's so lo alone, you know. It's just so alone. But in a way, that's kind of the place I'd like to be, honestly. <laughs> if, once I'm, if I'm laid down in a tomb, I think I'd just soon be in a place like that. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. What else have I got here for you today? Well, uh, that was the auction guitar. It's up to around $2,400 right now. And uh, I'm hoping that it'll even go further. Or go further. Um, it's on until, I think, around 5 o'clock tomorrow evening, I think, is when it is. Um, well, shoot, I, I don't think I have it up here. Let me look at real quick and see how long it's got. Um, I should have been prepared for that. I didn't think about it. It looks like it's got one day and eight hours and 52 minutes. So we got about one day and about nine hours to go on that uh, uh, auction guitar. So if you'd like to take part in that, be sure to go to my website, www.rosastringworks.com and uh, go to the shopping page and it's down at the bottom. You will have to pre-register before you can bid, and there is a registration page on my website also. So just find that page, go there, register, and then you can bid. Uh, if you would rather just make a donation, um, and I would appreciate it if you would, uh, you can just go, uh, uh, you can just send me an email with how much you'd like to donate. Uh, you can, you know, it can be any amount you want to make it, and uh, I will send you an invoice in return. And uh, I will put the tax ID number on that invoice. Uh, there's been quite a few people that have donated, and I do really, really appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to give them a nice, big, hefty check and make them feel appreciated. Uh, Dickie's last night, well, it was a good jam. We had a good time. It all went well, but Leon didn't show up, and I was worried about him. I tried to send him a couple of texts, and the weird thing is that you know how typically you can see your past conversations with someone when you send them text. I wasn't getting any past conversations on my text. So, and I tried two different ways, two different times. And so I don't know if I even got a text to him yet or not. But anyway, uh, other than Leon not being there, it all went really well. There was, it was a really small crowd though. We didn't have a big crowd at all. I kind of think the crowds are suffering now because we're not there every uh, Tuesday and they don't know when to come, you know. Uh, that's kind of the way that usually works. But that's not totally up to me, unfortunately. Um, I cleaned out that big heavy pipe yesterday for the water wheel project. Uh, it was not a simple project, trust me, to get that cleaned out. I f fashioned or fabricated a custom-made hook that I could take a pole and push it back up halfway up the pipe and hook onto the the last large metal thing in the middle of the pipe. I hooked onto that with, and then I took it, actually by hand, I could 
pull it, believe it or not. I, that was the only one that was loose. I could pull it about, I don't know, two-thirds of the way out the end of the pipe, and then it jammed, and it was stuck. So then I thought, well, we'll hook the Ranger was right there. It was already, The other end was already tied to the Bobcat, so I thought, well, we'll hook the Ranger onto it and see if it'll pull it out. Not at all. It wasn't going, you know, and if the Ranger can't pull it in four-wheel drive, the chances of you pulling out by hand are pretty slim. So I hooked on with the big Ford tractor, and it just spun the tr tires too. So then I hit it really hard, you know. I mean, I backed up and took a run at it and hit it, and I think I had to do that twice, and I finally got it out of there. It's amazing. Just, <laughs> it's never simple. And then there was so much junk on the inside, and I do not know what this junk was. It was kind of like a white gypsum is what it looked like. It looked exactly like a white gypsum, uh, and it was just everywhere. So I had to clean all that up, and there was a whole bunch of that black stuff flaking off of the pipe on the outside. I had to clean all that up, so it took a while. By the time I got all that cleaned up and got the pipe drug up there to where the pond is, it was already lunchtime. And it looked like it was going to rain any minute. There, the wind was kind of blowing and the clouds are black. So I thought, well, this would not be a good day to open up that trench and, you know, dig a, a trench across the driveway. So I decided I would. And plus, I was leaving for Dickies. I knew I wouldn't have all, you know, as, lo as long. So I thought, I better just wait till tomorrow. So today is the day. I'm, well, actually, though, now that I say that, I'm probably going to back up and do another phase of the project, and I've got a little video for you to kind of explain that phase, except I didn't put that, oh yes I did, whew, I thought, man, I didn't put it out here, I'm, I'm sure I did, and I, I just got it in a different place that I don't normally leave it, but here, here is the next phase of the project. Well, it's bright and early Wednesday morning, and I'm up here at the pond to show you the work that has to be done. You can see that the uh, bottom of this pipe, well, there's one of JR's dogs. You can see the bottom of this pipe is down low compared to the road. It's but that pipe's bigger too. That's a 14 inch pipe. I'm gonna be putting in a 12 inch pipe. So I, that'll raise it two inches just on itself. And then, um, you know, that's buried down there lower than it needs to be. I checked the bottom of that pipe up here and the bottom of the pipe here. Um, so from, from that place there, the bottom of the pipe to the bottom of the pipe here, it drops more than it needs to. So I can raise it up from that. Anyway, the bottom line is I need to get this as high as I can get it so that it'll go over the top of the water wheel. It looks like it would do that. Optically, it looks like it would do that, but it doesn't. I It fooled me uh, on the level, so it's, n it's just not going to work. The other thing is I want to clean this all out and re-tuck point all these rocks. You can see that the rocks have big cracks in them and stuff. Up there, it's not so bad. It flows pretty good up there. It's uh, pretty smooth. But down through here, all the uh, rocks are, you can even see that it's going behind the wall right there. So uh, maybe you can see that. So anyway, a lot of work in this area too. And when I do that, I want to raise this up a little bit also. And you can see that the pipe is fairly low uh, below the road there, too. Anyway, I'm hoping that's all going to work out. If you heard that little bird right there, that is a red-winged blackbird. Listen again. He'll probably do it again. That was him. Yep. Red-winged blackbird. Thought of, while I'm up here, I thought I'd just show you uh, quickly the... Uh, the actual spring house itself it's in bad shape too needs work um water's flowing out right through here actually that's not even coming out of the spring house i don't remember seeing it come out of there before that's crazy so something's happened we need to fix that too because that's not forcing the water through here there's a frog sitting over there these big tanks were where they I think they kept their milk uh, to keep the milk cold or maybe other things cold too. And this trough here, you can see water dripping in there. Anyway, the whole thing needs a lot of work. 
what I was hoping to do, since there's a break in this right here, I was hoping to dam this off, run the water out here temporarily, and just run it across and maybe in a pipe or temporary pipe or something over through here uh, so that I could work on all this. It's not gonna be a simple job. It's a big project, needs a lot of work, but that's just kind of normal. While I'm up here, I'll just show you there's some uh, flags blooming, or iris is what most people call them, but the old timers, the country people call them flags. These are really pretty, I think. They got a real pretty color to them. Don't ask me what the actual color is, because I don't really know. I'd guess a light blue. And then here's some different uh, daffodils or uh, jonquils. These are a different shape altogether compared to the ones I've shown in the past. And there's some more getting ready to bloom up here. There's a lot of them already blooming that are the darker uh, color, like a dark purple or a dark blue or something. But uh, they're not up in this area. Anyway, just like always, I've got my work cut out for me. It won't be a five minute job. It's uh, never simple. Never simple. That should be the only t-shirt I ever wear. <laughs> it's never simple. And that's the truth. It, it never is. Uh, let me see what else have I got out here. Um, the, um, you know, the plan today would be to get up there and get started on something up there. I'm just not even sure where to start. Um, you know, rerouting the water, I guess, or something. Um, and it looks like it might be a good day to do that because it looks sunny. But uh, at the restaurant last night, people were saying that they think it's going to be stormy today. So, I don't know. Either way, I can probably get something done and I'll probably do that. I guess that's everything I've got for you this morning. Let's go to the comments. Boy, there's a ton of them before we went live. <laughs> You guys just having too much fun out here. Ronald Todd was number one. D.E. was number two. And Dottie says, how are you doing, David? Okay. And uh, there's David Tharp. How are you? Okay, you guys are just having too many conversations between you. So let me look down through and see if I see any other question marks. Bill Rhodes says, good morning, Jerry. Hope you're having a good day. Well, so far, so good. Um... David Tharp, uh, I want to start growing my own food. Does anyone know where to get bacon seeds? <laughs> that would be me. I, that would be what I would be wanting to grow. Yeah, bacon seeds. That would be perfect. Um, yeah. Is there anything better than bacon? I mean, like anything? <laughs> it really isn't, I don't think. It's as good as it gets. Uh, moving on down. Let's see. Just looking for the question marks My primarily. Um, again, I just don't read fast enough to read all the comments. I guess D it must live in Iceland? Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, well, except for the volcanoes <laughs> all that stuff that's going on up there i haven't seen much on it lately but i know it's uh there's a lot of activity up in that area uh caroline fike says how about a virtual bluegrass band the rose of rabble play mandolin and claw hammer banjo what do y'all play <laughs> and Just, boy, there's a lot of comments. I'm just scrolling through. Joe Everett says, This chat comes from the rapidly raging, rip-roaring, rabble-rousing Rosa Rostrum. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you think we could find any more words that start with R? Um... <laughs> Uh, sliding. I'm still looking for question marks. I'm sorry. It's let's see. Moving on down further. We still haven't got to the live yet. <laughs> There's a lot of comments. Okay. 
Well, I don't think I see any more for me before we went live. Let's see if there's anything for me after we go live. Ronald Todd, it, it's not too early, Jerry. I'd like to make requests for the end of the month Thursday jam. Common sense song. All right. I'll, I'll start writing them down. Um, in fact, I better start a new sheet of paper here. Now, keep in mind, I, I can't do all the songs, so... I can only take maybe five or six is really about all I get to do because otherwise I'm monopolizing the thing and those folks want their turn too. So, But I'll write that one down. I started to do that last night and I just didn't do it at the, at the restaurant. So, so far you guys are the only ones that have heard that. But thank you for the request. Daddy Hildebrand, let's hear a chirp this morning, Jerry. Well, I guess you did sort of, kind of. <laughs> it might have been a little bit of a morbid chirp, but it was a chirp anyway. Gary Hyden, Jerry, question about your mandolin peg heads. On the back side of the peg head where it meets the neck seems to be a unique shape. Can't recall seeing that shape. Is that your design? Well, sort of, kind of. I have seen it on other mandolins, but... Because I, you know, I get those peg heads a certain thickness and I can get them to the, you know, to the thousandth of an inch that thick by running them through my thickness sander and pushing them in so far and pulling them out. Well, the thickness sander has a natural curve to it, so it curves up. Well, actually, <laughs> this one was done mostly before that, I think. But you can still see it's pretty similar that it's... It's like that also. I may have done this one with just a belt sander. I don't remember how I did this one. But uh, but the other ones, they come up a little bit more abrupt than this now. Um, anyway, that's how I do it. I just push them in there and do it that way. It's it's kind of my own design. And it, it leaves enough meat there for the truss rod too. So it works out pretty well. Uh, let's see. Dottie Hillebrand says, I really like that song. Well, <laughs> maybe you should see someone. <laughs> just teasing, just teasing. No, I, I don't know. I Like I said, I, I, I think it's just I've never had the guts to sing that one publicly. <laughs> it's the reason. So anyway, Mighty Fine Chirp, uh, Dottie says. Um, let's see. Bill Rhodes, uh, there was a wonderful... That was a wonderful song, Jerry. I really enjoyed it. Okay, well, okay, maybe I'm maybe I'm the one out on this one. I just I don't know. I just didn't feel too comfortable doing that one for some reason. I don't know why exactly. So I think it's because it's just a hard one to get a melody to and get it, you know, and the chords are kind of weird or you know different a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Bill Momo says that's a cheerful title. <laughs> Well, Kitchell Cemetery, that's what it is, you know. I don't, uh, that's what I wrote it about, you know. When I when I saw that out there, it it, it really did just kind of send chills down my spine. When I, I, when, I, when I came up on that grave the first time, uh, I don't feel that way when I go there now because I know what to expect. But that first time I walked up on it, it was like, whoa, this is weird. And it, it's such a beautiful marker that cast iron one that somebody shot with a gun I think I, I don't know that that's what happened but that's what it looks like it looks like somebody shot it with a bullet and busted out a piece of the cast iron it could have been from something else but that's what it looks like um, but anyway it, it really was kind of creepy the first time I saw it uh, uh, Lano man good morning does Dap wood filler work to repair wallowed out peg holes that need to be redrilled. Well, I would not use that, I don't think, for that purpose. Could you do it? Probably. Could you get away with it? Probably. It would probably work. But if I was, you know, if I was going to take the shortcut route, the shortcut route would probably be fill it with something like an epoxy and then redrill it. But if I was going to do it, I would uh, refill it with, with actual wood and, um, and then redrill it. That's the way I would do it. 
Now, as I said before, and I really do mean this, this is not something I'm just saying to pass the time. Your hard part is getting those holes spaced correctly. That's the hard part. Um, you know, those posts, they're four, four fixed posts. They don't want to move. They're fixed. They go straight into... And so, you know, if those holes aren't spaced exactly like those posts are spaced, well, then the posts will, you know, as you jam them up in there, they'll start to do this. And then, then these two posts are going to be really hard to turn, you know. So if, if, if the holes aren't spaced perfectly, you've got a problem with your, with your pegs. Um, I have, you know, I bought a jig from Stumac that's, that, uh, you know, works and then from that jig i built my own jig that i can clamp on and drill all eight holes at the same time so that's how i do it and that gets them perfect i mean like you just stick stick your tuners in there and they just slide right in you don't have any you know pulling or anything trust me it ain't easy to do freehand um and get them right it's not at all whether you think it is or not it's not it, it, uh, i would say if you did it on your first try and got it perfect uh you'd be real real lucky i've done it i did the first couple of mandolins freehand and uh it you know it took some work to get them where they didn't bind moving on down um ronald todd nice song well thanks uh jerry you still have grave markers up uh, they're not on my property. That's on. It's actually on um, uh, federal land now. It's um, national forest. Uh, it's on the Mark Twain National Forest now. Uh, but uh, it, yeah, it's still there. And uh, whew, it's. I I want to go back there. The the, uh, the Civil War marker has been moved and leaned against a tree. And I want to go back to, I'd probably get in trouble doing this on federal ground, but I still think I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> I shouldn't say that publicly like this, but I think I am. I'm going to go back there and clean the ground off in that area and find the depression where that Civil War stone stood and put it back in place. It had fallen over and then it was stood up against a tree. And it, it's not in the right place, I don't think, at all. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. I want to do that. I don't know if I'll ever get around to doing it because I, I got a few things on my plate as it is. But I would like to do that. I really would. Uh, Dottie Hildebrand. Whoever buys the guitar, they be getting a steal. Yeah, it's a nice guitar. It honestly is. I, I, I don't say it just because it's self-serving. I truly don't. I, if it was just an okay guitar, I'd tell you, it's an okay guitar. You can't go wrong with this. And then I'd tell you it's worth four or $500. This one's worth the money we're talking about. So it's, it's, a good, it's a good guitar. And whoever gets it, I'm almost positive is going to go, wow, that's a nice guitar. <laughs> They're going to be surprised. It's a nice guitar. Um, <clears throat> let's see, Russell Allen, there's an old cemetery in the woods near Emmer, Missouri, that may be a typo or something, E-M-E-R, I don't, I've never heard of that, um, where my dad was born and raised, uh, it had gone ignored for years, which allowed trees to grow up around it, yep, yep, yeah, uh, that's not the case on this particular marker, in case that's what you're at, or, uh, inserting but uh this particular marker i it was laying flat on the ground um i anyway it got set set up against a tree um chris tia thomas uh, well that's not a uh, question mark never mind um de jerry i don't live in iceland <laughs> where i live it snowed here during the night someone asked if i lived in iceland <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for clearing that up because I was just wondering. Um, David Tharp, this is an election year, Jerry. If your Bobcat is still running, I'll vote for it. <laughs> yeah, the Bobcat's running fine. Yeah, I don't even, you know, I don't like to get political exactly. Uh, what I sometimes people say with the things that I say are political, but to me, they're not. They're just black and white you know, common sense type stuff, and you can take it any way you want to. I, I flat don't give a rip, <laughs> you know. That's the way I feel about what I typically say on these things. 
But it, I will say this. Like I said, I'm an equal opportunity hater. Um, if the guy was, you know, I, you know, just a, a knight in silver shining armor, I'd still probably hate him. <laughs> because th to get where they're at, they didn't get there the, the way you and I would get there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, there's, uh, it's just a racket. It's a bunch of crooks. It's uh, money under the table. Uh, if w you and I did the stuff they do, we'd all be in jail. I guarantee you. Um, yeah. And I don't excuse them. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't go, well, he's better than the other guy. You need to vote for him. Well, yeah, but he also sucks canal water big time, you know, and um, so there you go. Both of them, in my opinion, aren't worthy of the position, in my opinion. That's my opinion. One of them, I like their policies a whole lot, but he can't keep his mouth shut for nothing. And if he'd just keep his dead gum mouth shut, I'd probably still vote for him. But he can't keep his mouth shut. Period. End of story. Egomaniac all the way. <sighs> there you go. That's my opinion. Equal opportunity hater. Don't like either one of them at all. <clears throat> Let's see. Roger Daigle. Jerry, two of my paternal family members did basic training for the Civil War in Rolla, then were shipped to Chicago for prisoner war guards. Do you know where the training camp was located? Um, well, if you hadn't asked me, I might have been able to give you a clue. Um, I think it started with a W. Williams Creek or something like that. Camp Wyman? That's got a ring to it, but I could be thinking of something entirely different. It seems like there's something like that around here. Camp Wyman or something or what they referred to. Um, I don't know. Just don't know. Can't remember. I know I've heard of something along those lines. There was, there was no real big battles fought here in Phelps County, but there were lots of what they call Jayhawkers. And, you know, um, <sighs> there's another name, too, that they use uh, for the rebel rousers, you know, kind of people not the rosa rabble rousers the other ones <laughs> but anyway they there was no major battles fought here that as far as i know maybe the camp was right here because <laughs> i'm finding a lot of stuff um i think my uh, metal detector has shipped the guy asked me for my shipping address yesterday and uh, i sent it to him and um, so it either got shipped yesterday or i replied kind of early afternoon so he may not have shipped it till today but i'll be getting it fairly soon i'm really looking forward to trying it out i really do think the new metal detector could be a game changer here on finding some of the stuff that i'm trying to find but you never know it may not do any better than the one i got um honestly i i i know that going in so i'm i'm prepared in case that happens but but uh, worst case is I'll have two d good detectors here now because there are people that come out here and want to detect with me. And uh, now I'll have one I can hand them and it's a good detector. Um, <clears throat> Russell Allen, uh, my early comment had a misspelling. Uh, should have been Elmer. I kind of thought that was what it was supposed to be, but I, I didn't want to say that either because I didn't know. There may have been an Emmer, Missouri, for all I know. Elmer, Missouri. Yeah, I've heard of that. I can't recall where that's at exactly, but I've heard of it. Yeah, they, they cleaned out the, made a road and cleaned out the brush. Yep. Well, this one needs some attention because it's out in the middle of the National Forest and it's nothing around there. I mean, I don't know how far it would be to the closest road, but I'd guess at least, at least a half mile, if not a mile. Uh, Ronald Todd, I mean, you had the grave marker screen up until you went to the Springhouse video. Sorry. Okay. Well, I didn't care. I, you know, you could still see me, hear me. 
Uh, Bill Webb, I had a lady bring in a Martin guitar yesterday. She wanted a lower action. The low E string was 4 millimeters at the 12th fret. Neck was back bowed something terrible. It came from a big name store. Wow. Yeah, four millimeters would be a little bit high. That'd be about 160 thousandths when I go for 80 thousandths. So just slightly more than twice as high, probably. Uh, yeah, well, check it. It might have a two-way truss, right? <laughs> but uh, again, for those of you who are new, uh, I'm not going to get on a big rant about the two-way truss rod, but I am going to talk about truss rods in general because uh, it's the most misunderstood part of an instrument. It's the most misunderstood. Absolutely, there's nothing else that's more misunderstood than the truss rod. There's, it's rare when you hear anybody talk about a truss rod and they know what they're talking about. Um, I couldn't even count, you know, I, I know it's at least happened a thousand times. And I, I don't think I'm exaggerating. It's probably happened a thousand times where people come in and say, my action needs adjusting. Could you adjust the truss rod and fix it for me? Well, I'm telling you right now, you cannot fix your action with a truss rod. You can't fix it. I don't care who you are, unless you're God. You cannot fix your action with a truss rod. Truss rod only does this. See, that underbow there, that's the neck. That's your underbow. Truss rod does that. That's all the truss rod does. You can tighten it all day long. You can loosen it all day long. And that's all you get is that. You don't get nothing else. That's it. That's all you get with a truss rod. You may think you get more than that, but you don't. All it does is change that to that. Now, you say, well, that, that'll affect your action. Well, it does affect your action a tiny bit. All it really does is it raises the neck up. The, the strings are still here and attached back here, so it didn't change the strings. All it did was it changed that middle section. And this is an exaggeration you understand. You know, typically your truss rod adjustment is just a few thousandths. It's not really like I'm showing here. This makes it look like it's a big deal. But honestly, you're just talking a couple of thousandths, and it'll raise that up just a couple of thousandths, a few thousandths. That's it. That's all it does. So if your strings are high at your 12th fret, that's not going to fix it. You're going to have to lower your saddle. Or you're going to have to uh, get the hump out of your bridge. If there's a huge hump there, you're going to have to fix that. Maybe a new bridge plate, something like that. If your action's high at the nut end, you got to lower the nut. That, that's how you fix your action. You do not fix your action with a truss rod. I don't care who you are, who what you think you know. You cannot fix your action with a truss rod. You can affect your action a tiny bit. When I say affect, I just mean a tiny bit. That's all you're doing with a truss rod. Write that one down. Take that one to the bank. That is 100%. And you can find it. If you read the fine print on from the guitar manufacturers, they'll tell you the same thing. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's see. Daddy Hildebrandt. Is the blackbird the same as a crow? No. Uh, do blackbirds ever bring you gifts? No. Um, crows will occasionally do stuff like that, but it's pretty rare. It's probably more around where there are more people. Crows are really, really, really smart animals. In fact, they say they're as smart as a seven-year-old child. Um, they really are smart. Uh, crows are extremely finicky of people out in the wild, but if they see your routine and they know what your routine is and they know it's not bad intentions towards them, they don't pay much attention to it. In other words, like the, the crows will be in these trees right above the chicken house and they'll fly down and sometimes eat some of the chicken feed, that kind of stuff, you know. And as long as all you do is just drive up and down the driveway, all they do is just fly up in the tree. But if you got out and walked toward that tree, well, then they're going to take off, you know, uh, that kind of thing. But they learn these things. They're, they're, they're smart. And like if a certain person is the one that gives them the trouble, they're going to run from that person every time. But like if Sue would walk down through there and she's never given them any trouble, they won't bother moving. 
Um, it, they're really smart. They're very, very, very smart. But uh, and they and crows do gather th shiny things sometimes and and things like that. You can like I had pet crows growing up, at least a couple of times, and Dad had one for a very long time. And uh, they will like if you lay down a small shiny wrench, they'll fly over and pick it up and fly up into a tree with it or something. You know, I mean that <laughs> you got to watch them. So they're they're pretty smart. Now blackbirds, on the other hand, are are just small black birds. They're they're not the same kind of thing at all. And the red winged blackbird is is unique in that the, it has bright red, uh, I even red enough that I can see it on their wings, and it's got a little line of yellow around that, like a. It almost looks like um, what do you call those things on a on a general's shoulder or something? It kind of looks like that. It's it's an emblem or a. You know, a decoration, if you will. It, that's what it kind of looks like on their on their wings. Um, but anyway, the red winged blackbird is is unique to blackbirds, even because uh, there are there, there's all kinds of blackbirds. There's grackles. There's common blackbirds, and there's there's all kinds of things that are similar to blackbirds too, like cowbirds and all kinds of stuff. I I used to know every bird there is in Missouri, but I, that was when I was younger. I was really into the birds, but I barely remember anything about them now. Um, moving on, let's see. The action was terrible. I was able to straighten the neck via the truss rod and lower the action by filing the saddle down. Really made a difference. Yep. Y'all, that's where you got to do it. You got to do it at the saddle. You you can't do it with the truss rod. The truss, if you said it had, you know, if it's got that steep underbow, sure, that's what the truss rod's for. But, whew. It's uh, so many people, so many people. I can't tell you how many think you can adjust your action with a truss rod. That's not what it's for at all. It's just to straighten your neck. That's all the truss rod does, period. Um, let's see, Dottie, I play at play banjo. Not good at all, but I have fun. <laughs> Uh, well, I can take a flat pick and play a tune or two on a banjo, and that's about as good as I can do, but I can't play it with the finger thing. Chuck Heidbretter, Fort Wyman on the top of the hill behind Chrysler. Okay, okay. I know, I, uh, that's probably where it was, because I, I knew I'd heard of something like that around here. It's probably where it was. Uh, Jeff Pierce, I'm hoping you find the Holy Grail of Fines, CSA or Union belt buckle. I would love it. That or uh, belt buckle or any, well, even those, they had these cases and boxes that had the, a, a plate on them that said U, uh, USA. Um, if I could find that, I'd be tickled. If I could find a cannonball. I mean, I could foresee the, I mean, even though there was no battles here, so they wouldn't fire a cannonball in a battle, I can still see that they might have fired one for practice, you know, and there could be one around here somewhere. So, man, but the problem with that is, more than likely, they've probably fired them from the valley up onto the hillside somewhere, and, you know, I'm typically not searching up on those hillsides. But if 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 I was going to fire a cannon down here, that's what I would do. I'd fire it to one of those hillsides. But the hillsides are pretty steep and pretty growed up and hard to detect, so I wish I could find a cannonball. That would be so cool. That would be so cool. Uh, moving on down. <clears throat> yeah, anything like that, Jeff, would be awesome if I could find something that said USA on it. I, uh, there was nothing... Everything I found here so far has been um, the Union side. I have not found anything Confederate, and uh, I don't think I will find anything Confederate. I don't because again, there were no battles here, as far as we know. Um, the things I'm finding, I think they were probably shooting at dinner. You know, it wouldn't surprise me at all, or target practice, or something like that. That's that's why I think I'm finding the bullets. Am I going to find many more? I don't know. I would like to find a bunch more. I found about a dozen. That's not too bad. But you just never know. Uh, Edward Kashuba, I want to say thanks for your 
videos on guitar repair, I have started undertaking some projects. First one was reducing the thickness of the uh, of a classical guitar will be starting a restoration. Well, good. I hope everything works out for you very much. Dottie says, Jerry, I've been told that before about seeking help. Oh, <laughs> what I said to her before, you might want to go get some help because <laughs> she said she liked that song. Okay, yep. There you go. At least I remembered the context this time. <laughs> That's hard for me to keep it all in context because there's so many subjects. We're back and forth and back and forth. And whew. Um, Steve Mann, up here in Platt County, we had the Paw Paw Militia had a battle with Kansas and Colorado Union troops at Camden Point, July 1864. Cool. Um, I can't think of the name of the darn town right now. J.R. lived up in a northern, northwestern town. Can't think of it. I know I, I know I would know it if I heard it. But anyway, there's a cannonball embedded into the courthouse, into the corner of the courthouse or, or a pillar or something. And the cannonball's still there from the Civil War. Um, I can't think of the name of the, of the town, but that's pretty cool too. Uh, the only thing that surprises me is somebody hasn't, some low-life scumbag hasn't climbed up there in the middle of the night and stolen it. That's the only thing that surprises me. Uh, Steve Mann up, oh, sorry, that's the one I just read. Cup of Cool, uh, do you know why you don't see crows laying dead in the road? There is always more screaming, car, car, car. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. They have an early warning system, don't they? It's already built in. Uh, the freeze says we actually feed our crows every morning to keep them around, uh, uh, order to keep the hawks away from our chickens. Well, that's not a bad idea, actually. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> it really isn't. Uh, but crows are really, really smart. They they are not dumb at all. And as I told you, my dad's crow could speak. And uh, yeah, he, he can say five or six things. I, I can't remember everything he'd say. But like dad's thing was training horses, you know, kind of like JR's is, for hor for shows, you know. And he would ride them. Dad's barn was different. Well, it's similar to JR's, actually, where JR's has all that stuff in the center and you ride around the stuff. That's the way my dad's barn was made, too. Now, Dad had big stalls, a whole bunch of stalls in the center, plus he had hay storage in the middle of that. And so you couldn't really see anybody across because it was all solid, you know, and you'd ride around. You could only see them when they got there. Well, the crow sat at one of those spots. So every time my dad would ride around, the crow would say, looking good, <laughs> looking good. <laughs> and he, 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 my dad's name was Elmo Rosa. Uh, his actual name was Arthur Elmo Rosa, but he went by Elmo. Everybody called him Elmo. Anyway, uh, the, the crow, when he'd walk in the barn, the crow would say, hello, Elmo. <laughs> He could say two or three other things too. I can't remember what they were, but he could he could talk pretty good. Uh, let's see. Papa Tom died near Ozark Iron Works, Phelps County, Missouri, on on the first of December, eighteen seventy seven, in eighty first year of her age. Mrs. Jonah Kitchell, widow of E. F. Kitchell. Yeah, that could be it. That could that could definitely be it. Ozark Ironworks. You just you just hit on something there. Ozark Ironworks. My property was leased by two mining companies in the late possibly late 1800s and early 1900s for sure. Ozark Ironworks. Hmm. I, one of the companies that leased my property started with Ozark, but I don't remember what the rest of the name was. 
or it had Ozark in the name, let's say it that way. That's weird. So if she died near there, that would be pretty near there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's weird. That might be tied in. That might be tied in. Um, Papa Tom says he sent me a link with uh, for the cemetery. Thank you. I, I've seen some of that stuff over the years in the past, but uh, I haven't looked at anything lately. So it's been a long time since I looked up anything on that. And back then, when I looked it up, it probably wasn't as good as the information on the Internet now. Because when I looked it up, it was probably 20 years ago. Bill Webb, I did check the truss rod, but it was standard righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Okay, good. Uh, Steve Mann, Lexington. Um, Michael Love, very good. Lexington, yeah, that's the name of that town. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, it is Lexington, Missouri. That's where J.R. lived for a while, and there is a cannonball in the courthouse, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, Michael Love says, very good song. Well, thank you. Bill Webb is, I always start with a straight neck and only put in an under bow relief if the customer insists. Yeah, I like straight necks. I, uh, the neck's going to have a slight pull under bow. You know, I, I typically prefer them to be straight. Uh, let me just give you one more. And I've given this example before, too. But it it's it's a good example Maybe it'd be better if I tried to draw it here. What I'm really showing, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna exaggerate it again, you know. So uh, anyway, okay. So here's uh, here's the nut up at this end, and the other end is the saddle. Now it's exaggerated by a lot, but you understand my point. The this underbow, which is what people call relief. Um, there's always a hump. There's always a hump right here, you, you know, because the neck is at a slight angle to the top. And so when you fold that down, there's always a little bit of a hump right here. So the clearance right there is always kind of sketchy anyway. Now, if you have a lot of underbow, when you press down here, how close did that make the string back here at the hump? See, that's why I prefer to have a straight neck. If you have a straight neck straight from here to the, where that hump is, then when you press down, you didn't get real close and get real buzzy right there. So my preference is a straight neck because of that, you know, rather than having a lot of relief. If you're going to have relief, I truly don't see what relief does for you. I know people come up with all kinds of things that they think relief does for you. I truly don't get it. It doesn't seem to do anything for me. Um, so I prefer straight, but, um, if you insist on having relief, less is more in my opinion. So just thought I'd point that out. Um, <clears throat> Fred Martin, the cannonball is in the Fayette Howard County courthouse, Fayette County courthouse. Okay. But I think the town is Lexington. Pretty sure Lexington's the right town that when he said that, that's I'm pretty sure that's where J.R. lived. So I don't know, I don't know the county, but Fayette County, Fayette Howard County, Fayette Howard County Courthouse. Okay. So that's the name of the courthouse, I guess. But anyway, it's pretty cool that there's a cannonball embedded in the courthouse. Um, the freeze, yes, there was plenty of saddle left. I took eighty thousandths off the saddle and lowered the action. By half, yeah, that's good. Um, you know, and that's just one more thing, too, uh, that you should understand. Um, it, it's just tips on setup and stuff. Is That is, you know, a, a taller saddle puts a little bit more pressure down on your bridge, gives you a little more volume and all that. But every single thing, I don't care what you're talking about, every single thing on a guitar has a point of diminishing return. And if you get your saddle too tall, then, then it, it has the effect of um, sounding a little bit like you're playing in a barrel, number one. That's one of the problems. But a bigger problem is that you just made a longer lever. You know what a lever is? A lever will move the world if you have a big enough lever. I mean, it, a levers are super 
powerful. And so if you get a taller, taller saddle uh, and your strings are pulling on that, that's a lever. It's, it's pulling it this way. It's going to crack your bridge. So you don't ever want to have a taller saddle than you need. You know, um, it, it's good to have a tall saddle to a certain point, and then you don't want to go beyond that point. If, if I just want to make that a, you know, clear so that people understand the dynamics that are going on there. You, you, anyway, it, it, you know, you got to have it as high as you got to have it, you know, in order to get clearance and, and, and get the action proper. You got to have it a certain height. But if that certain height turns out to be really tall, then you got a different problem. You probably have uh, a neck angle that's wrong and you probably need to fix your neck angle because you don't want your saddle like, you know, a half inch above your bridge. <laughs> you know, you don't want it like that. That's going to break your bridge. That's not a good thing at all. Plus, it's not going to help your sound either. So anyway, I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, everything about it, really, the way I think of it, everything about setup on that stuff is just common sense. Black and white, um, 100% type stuff that you can just take to the bank. It, it, there's no guesswork involved in 99.9% .9 of it. So anyway, that's the way I feel about it. Oh, Fred Martin says, sorry, I'm wrong. It is in Lexington. Okay. All right. Well, whatever. But I know Lexington was the town they lived in. And I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure uh, that, that I have that much of the facts straight and all that, you know. And uh, I do know it was in the courthouse. But uh, I don't know the name of the courthouse or anything. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for listening to my weird song. And uh, I will be back tomorrow with something else. And we will see you then. Thank you.